This is an intumescent cataract. 2% HPMC is injected into the anterior chamber and now the anti-capsule is incised and a C flap is raised. Now I use the iterator forceps, hold this C flap and convert it into a small rexis. I call it a mini rexis. And now I use a Simco cannula, 23G Simco cannula to aspirate some lens matter, some cortical matter and this maneuver drastically reduces the intraoral lenticular pressure. Then 2% ASPMC is injected again. A vana scissor is taken and a small oblique cut is made at the margin of this minirexis. The iterator is taken again and this small rexis is enlarged into an optimum sized capsulorexis. And this is the most tricky part of antimacent cataracts. Now this is a hypermature Morgagnian cataract. The anticapsule has been stained with tripan blue dye. A 26 case needle cystitome has been used to make a puncture on the anterior capsule. And now as I try to do a small rexis, milky fluid comes out. This milky fluid indicates it is a hypermature Morgagnian cataract. Now some milky fluid is aspirated by a 23G Simco cannula. The intralenticular pressure is reduced. Visco is injected. A small cut is made at the margin of this small rexis and the uterita forceps is used to enlarge this small rexis into an optimum sized rexis. Now, we can see this is a hard cataract and in such cases I use submarine chop if the cataract is not so hard. If the cataract is up to grade 5, grade 4 plus or grade 5, I use this technique. I call it submarine chop. And with this technique I can easily divide the nucleus into several fragments. I use 450 vacuum to hold the nucleus. This is another hypermature Morgagnian cataract. The anticapsule is incised. Milky fluid comes out. Then I used the uterita forceps to make a small rexis first. Then I used Simco to aspirate cortex inject visco, make a cut at the margin of the rexis and enlarge the rexis into an optimum sized large rexis. Now we can see this is a very hard cataract. Nuclear sclerosis is about grade 6. And in such cases I do crater and chop technique. I make a crater at the center of the nucleus. This is one kind of debulking. And then I go with the FACO needle, make the bevel up towards the cornea and go at the floor of this pit, floor of this crater and hold the nucleus very firmly and then chop this nucleus. And this debulking helps a lot. The nucleus divides easily into fragments. This is 180 degree away holding 180 degree away and along the initial crack the nucleus divides into two halves. This is a hypermature sclerotic cataract. In this case there is no milky fluid. All the milky fluid has got absorbed and the epinucleus has become like thick card. Capsulorexis is completed and see the epinucleus has turned into this kind of material. And this is typical smorgagnia, the typical hypermature sclerotic cataract. 
in such cases in this case i tried direct chop but i was not successful so i flipped the nucleus and i could emulsify the nucleus but it is dangerous if we see there is trampolining of the posterior capsule in this in this case uh, nowadays i use this instrument designed by me i call it a posterior capsule protector it has a contour which is which conforms to the posterior capsule and you can emulsify the last piece being at the iris plane in some hypermature morganian cataracts as we make a puncture on the anterior capsule lot of milky fluid comes out in such cases we can aspirate the milky fluid without converting the puncture into a small rexis and after aspirating we inject visco and convert the rexis into an optimum sized one